So we've given you a brief little introduction on what a linear equation in standard form looks like. However, in practicality, it's not as useful as being in slope-intercept form. When something's in slope-intercept form, you can find the slope, you can find the y-intercept, and those have a lot more practical applications in real life. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take equations in standard form and we're going to convert them back into slope-intercept form, the more useful one. And let's get started. Just to review, let's go ahead and graph each of these equations. The first one's given to you in standard form. The other one is in slope-intercept form. For the first one, since it's in standard form, we're going to find the intercepts. So let's start by finding the x-intercept. Just a reminder, to find the x-intercept, you change the y to a 0. So it's 5x plus 4 times 0 equals negative 40. Then you realize the 4 times 0 is just nothing. And we get negative 5x equals negative 40. We'll divide by negative 5 on both sides. And we end up with an x-intercept of positive 8. On the y-intercept, we do the exact same thing. However, this time we set the x to a 0. So we get negative 5 times 0 plus 4y equals negative 40. Negative 5 times 0, that goes away. And we're left with 4y equals negative 40. We're going to divide both sides by 4. And we get a y-intercept of negative 10. So let's just go ahead and plot those two intercepts. If the y-intercept is negative 10, that's down here. And if the x-intercept was at 8, that's going to be here. And then connect it with as straight of a line as we can make. And it would look something like that. We found the x-intercept. We found the y-intercept. Plot the two points and connect them with a straight line. This other equation over here, it's given to you in slope-intercept form. And in order to graph this, we plot the y-intercept first. So we're going to start down here at negative 10. And then we're using the slope to create more points. In this case, the slope is a positive 5 over 4. That means it will go up by 5 and over by 4. So let's go ahead and do that. Up 5 over 4 brings us about there. We can go up 5 over 4 again, and it's there. And then let's just connect them with a straight line. And now let's zoom out a little bit. What do you notice about those two lines? Yes, you're shouting at the computer screen. They're the exact same line. And you're right, they are. So what you should notice is this equation in standard form is the exact same equation as this one in slope-intercept form. They look different, but in the end, they have all the exact same properties. So what we're going to be doing today is converting it from standard form into slope intercept form. So we're going to make it look like this and we're going to turn it into this. So hopefully they're the same smiley face. First example, convert the following equations from standard form to slope intercept form. Now if you remember, slope intercept form is the one that starts with y equals. So in order to convert something into slope intercept form, we have to get y all by itself. I want y by itself with no numbers, no x's, no nothing bothering it, just a y equals. So if I look at this first one, given to you in standard form, I want to get this y all by itself, which means that negative 3x, uh-uh, you got to go. So I'm going to do plus 3x over here, and I'm going to put plus 3x over here. And by doing that, that minus 3x goes away. And we're left with 8y equals, some of you might be thinking 75x, they're not like terms. You can't combine them, so keep them separated. So it's going to be 72 plus 3x. So now we've almost got y by itself, but there's still that 8 that's bothering it. So let's just go ahead and get rid of that 8. To get rid of it, we're going to divide both sides by 8. The 8s go away. 
and we're left with y equals. Now each of these two components is going to get divided by 8. So let's start with this part. 72 divided by 8 is 9. And then we have this part here. That 3 over 8 can't be reduced, so it's just going to be plus 3 over 8x. And that is the final equation in slope intercept form. So what we've done is we've converted it from standard form to slope intercept form, and now we can say, oh, it has a slope of 3 eighths, and it has a y-intercept of 9. So it's a lot easier to identify those pieces once it's in slope intercept form. Let's go ahead and do one more. 2x minus 3y equals 18. Remember, I'm trying to get y by itself. So slope intercept form, get y all by itself. So that 2x, it's got to go. To get rid of a 2x, we're going to subtract it from both sides. And it goes away. Make sure you drop down the negative 3y equals 18 subtract 2x. And now to get y by itself, we have to divide it by negative 3 on both sides. And this is sometimes where things get a little bit messy, especially with those negative signs, but I'll walk you through it. Let's start with this first part. 18 divided by negative 3. 18 divided by negative 3, that's a negative 6. Then we get to the ne this next part, and this is sometimes where kids screw up. If we're dividing these, a negative 2x divided by negative 3, a negative divided by a negative makes it a positive. And that 2 over 3 can't be reduced, so it's plus 2 thirds x. So this is the final equation in slope intercept form. It would have a slope of 2 thirds and a y intercept of negative 6. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, I thought the x's come first. Sure, you can rewrite it if you'd like as 2 thirds x minus 6 if you're more comfortable with it. This is the exact same thing too. So the order that you write them in doesn't necessarily matter, especially with linear functions. Uh, later on, when you get to higher level math, yes, the order is going to matter a little bit more. But for linear functions, you can kind of see them both right away. Try the next two on your own. Before you try those, go ahead and write down the password for this assignment. The password is going to be vaccine. Uh, let's make sure that's a lowercase v. I'm going to do that one more time. V-A-C-C-I-N-E. Vaccine. So go ahead and try the next two on your own. Pause the video here now and give yourself a chance to do those, and then come on back when you're ready. Okay, hopefully those weren't so bad. Let's move on to a couple more examples where all the only real difference is you're going to have to reduce some things a little bit. So once again, this is given to you in standard form. We don't like standard form that much. So we're going to convert it, and we're going to get y by itself. So subtract 2x from both sides, and the x's go away. And then we have negative 6y equals 24 minus 2x. To get y by itself, we have to divide by negative 6 on both sides. And here's where you really got to pay attention to your reducing. Let's take this first component, this 24 divided by negative 6. 24 divided by negative 6 is a negative 4. Positive divided by negative is a negative. Now let's take this next component, 2 over 6. First off, the negative divided by a negative means this is going to be a positive. But if you have 2 over 6, it can be reduced. The top and bottom can both be divided by 2. So if you reduce this, 2 over 6 turns into 1 third. And this would be the final reduced answer. If it helps going piece by piece, you could have done this, y equals negative 4 plus 2 over 6x, and then take the 2 over 6 and reduce it to 1 over 3. But um, 
helps if you can just kind of reduce it right from the get-go. And for the next one, again, we're trying to get y by itself. So let's get rid of the minus 6x. We're going to plus 6x to both sides. And we're left with 8y equals negative 88 plus 6x. And we want y by itself, so that 8, that has to go. So we're going to divide both sides by an 8. And then the 8 disappears. And we're left with y equals, if we take negative 88 divided by 8, a negative divided by a positive is a negative, so this will be negative 11. And then we have this part here, the 6x over 8. 6 over 8 can be reduced. You can divide them both by 2. So that's going to be reduced to be 3 over 4. So it's going to be negative 11 plus 3 over 4x. And there is your final equation in slope intercept form. There's a couple more for you to do on your own, and then you are set for learning this week. Then go ahead and take your quiz, and then you're done. So hope you have a good rest of the week. I will see you next week for the test. Bye, everyone.